metro, I don't trust you, I'm gon' shoot you Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me get comfortable so we can start class. Here we go. So how's everyone doing today? Good. 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 Yeah. I'm not doing so well. I didn't sleep. Uh, I was excited to talk about hearsay today. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and start. Uh, Madeline, you'll know this one. Uh, so if, the, uh, if you say you heard the Ford Taurus, run the red light, well, that would be hearsay. However, if you say you heard the Ford Taurus run the red light in the sense that you heard the sound that the car made as it went through the red light, well, that's personal knowledge. Just like I have personal knowledge, <laughs> George is laughing for no reason right now. I just can't really ever figure it out. <laughs> just can't figure it out. <laughs> However, if you said that, Luke, you practice Professor McCarthy's mannerisms in front of the mirror at night, don't you? I would say, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. His suits are way better than mine, and he would never wear a button down. So that's crazy. Uh, just as crazy as you people that have never seen my cousin Vinny. <laughs> I just don't get it. It's crazy to me. It's just so hot. You know, I took my jacket off earlier. I really just don't understand it. It's something with these new lights, I think. They just, they're just hot. Kind of boiling up here. I kind of almost feel like a like a rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken. Oh, oh, we uh looks like we even brought your rotisserie chicken. It looks like it's lemon lemon pepper. That's great. Well, uh, you have a great day. Just stop passing that around. People, what what's going on today? Everyone seems so tired. It's like you need some coffee. Personally, I don't drink coffee. I just think about, well, hearsay and character evidence and one that's near dear to my heart, Rule 103, kind of gets me going. Well, who died? It's mighty quiet in here. I'm just used to y'all continuing the conversation five minutes into class, kind of caught me off guard. Um, y'all be sure to sign the roll. We've missed the... Uh, past four classes or so, so they're kind of getting on me about that. Um, okay, so. All right, so let's get back to talking about um, estate tax. Um, tax levying on the net value of the estate of a deceased person for distribution to their heirs. So pretty much, you die? Huh, that's too bad. <laughs> We're gonna tax you anyway. Um, all right, let's see. Um, oh, also I wanted to make a note, um, you know, all these people doing OCIs, um, just go and, go and come as you please. Um, you know, don't bother sending an email or, or talking to me before class or anything. Um, just get up and go, go as you please. It's not distracting at all or anything. Uh, okay. All right, uh, any, any questions about that? Yeah, George. Right, yeah, um, so in my notes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't, we don't have time for, for your notes. I'm sorry, that's just gonna open up a whole another can of worms. We just need to stick to the material. Um, it, it's just too much, too much. We can't be doing that. Um, I noticed the, the large migration to the back of the room. Um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what that's about. Um, you know, it's kind of hard. It makes me have to talk louder, and I can't help but think that you can't hear me as well. But, you know, whatever. Just everybody move back there. Um, don't really understand. It's fine. I just wanted to make a comment on it, just to let you know I noticed it. Uh, <laughs> next case, um, the haunted house case, um, pretty much it's just dicta. Um, has pretty much nothing to do with, you know, what's going to be on the final exam. They just put this in every uh, every property book just to get a kick out of it. So we're just going to skip it. I know you probably read it, but, uh, huh. yeah, we're just going to go on. So. All right, let's see. One of these work. Oh, yep. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. We'll go with that. All right. How's everybody doing? Good. 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 All right. All right. How are you? Let's see. Uh, well, you know, I'm doing pretty well. You know, except for these allergies, man. It's it's been bothering me all weekend. I just I can't, I can't get over it. All right. All right. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let's go down the list. Who we got? Uh, uh, go through my randomizer. See who we get to check off today. Um, let's kill him. Let's kill him. It's Mr. Mr. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, how you doing today? Hey, doing doing great. How about yourself? Oh, uh, well, I'm doing pretty good. It's so hot in this room. You know, it's just, oh man, I tell you, it's uh, we can use some air. But uh, all is good. All right, all right. Let's see. So let's get going. Uh, so we have uh, international shoe. Uh, tell us about it. what are the facts of the case. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, anybody can help him out? Anybody? Uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, uh -uh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Delise. I, I'm sorry, I didn't read for class. Okay. I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll be next on cue though. I... Okay. Okay. Well, let's, let me make sure I mark these guys off. Somebody's gonna have a trick later on today. <laughs> All right, uh, Miss Armstead, you get the you get the prize today since no one else is prepared. <laughs> tell me, tell me about a international shoe. Um, I, I think it was about personal jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whether or not the company had contacts? No, particularly. Okay, we, it's it's a little more than than just that. You're on the right track. Somebody, somebody help around class. Somebody, yes, sir. Minimum contacts. Right, right, right. And what about these minimum contacts? They need to be sufficient. Ah, thanks, sir. Yeah, sufficient. They need to be sufficient. That's yeah. That's 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 uh that's 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 minimum contacts. Uh, what, if not only should they be sufficient, what else about these minimum contacts? Anybody? Mr. Zalise, you like got something on your, on your mind. Yeah, yeah, they must arise out of the uh, transaction. That's right, that's right. They must arise out of the transaction. So they have to be uh, sufficient and uh, they arise out of the transaction. Anything else? I yes, think the, the case also said they must be reasonable. Right, right. And, and what do we use for this, these reasonable, these reasonable? Well, the, the case lists a couple of factors. Ah, reasonable stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see, where's my PowerPoint? Ah, okay, let's change the slide. Oh, this, oh, okay. Okay, well, y'all copy that next time I send it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, it's pinned out here. Lots of freebies today. Okay, so here we go. Uh, when we last up, left off, we were talking about the Ainsworth case, or as I like to call it, the $6 billion man case. And, uh, so what we got here? Well, we got this old man. He's uh, down on his luck. He's been, uh, been injured, got a lot of injuries. And uh, comes to the court to get a bailout. And he's asking for damages. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Diaz. What kind of damages would you ask for here? Well, Alan Blow's outline says compensatory damages. I'm not talking about these outlines. We gotta read Farnsworth. We gotta read the nutshell. Give me the substantive law. Query, on an exam, are you gonna just give me emotional thinking? Or are you gonna give me disciplined minds? I just, I'm merely a conduit, people. I'm not your adversary. I want everybody to make an A. Well, do you see what we've got here? Anyways, with this Ainsworth case, we got this old man, he's down on his luck, and the court comes and bails him out. The court says punitive damages are possible. Query, did the court make this contract or did the parties make this contract? Is this box A, thinking, socialism, or is this box B, fair, reasonable, just? Oh, crap, let's get it. Yes. Um, so, I have a question. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't have to preface a question with a question. Like, when you raise your, your hand, I understand that we have a question, people. The time you're wasting here, multiply that by 50, and that's what you're doing to all these people. So go ahead. What's your question? Um, so, in the restatement, there are a lot of numbers. Yeah. Do we have to know the numbers in order? Or like... Folks, what have I been trying to say all this time? The numbers don't matter. Just give me the substantive law. 
Don't just tell me restatement 50. Give me the two-part test. Put it on an exam. We don't want emotional thinking. We want reason. We want disciplined minds. Now, anyways. Um, I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Um. So is like the restatement the same thing as the UCC, or would that be different? Well, they're different things, aren't they? We know that. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. So, uh, like, what if the parties would agree? Well, I mean, if a bullfrog had wings, I mean, we could sit here all day and talk about what ifs, but we're talking about what really happened here. Okay. So, anyways, as we're going on with this. Uh, the court says that punitive damages here were uh, appropriate. The court seems to come in here and bail this guy out. Query, does everybody get a hand up? Is this government regulation, box A, or is this box B, free market? Don't piss off mother market, people. Query, what, are we, what does your state say? We got the government coming in here, making all these regulations, and limiting the market. Well, we got Box B, the better way. I'm just here, I'm merely a conduit, people. This is just the way it is. So on the exam, I want you to give me the substantive law. Give me the two-part test. Uh, I'm here to submit to you that everybody here can make an A. But we got to grow the hell up moment here. I'm just going to let you know, they're not hiring down to save the Wells Foundation. Someday you're going to have an employer, and they're going to they're gonna look to you, and they're going to want you to give them the law. They don't want you to give them opinions. Opinions don't matter. Facts matter, people. Evidence matters. What does your state say? I'm from the government, I'm here to help. That's box A. We don't want box A, we want box B. So, now, uh, 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 to end off the hour, uh, I just want to remind you all to really consider the uh, JD MBA program. Uh, I just had a student email me the other day and tell me about, he thanked me and he told me that all the things I've taught him really helped him out. And now he's making a million dollars somewhere out in California. And let me just tell you, I want everybody to do that. I'm not your adversary, people. I'm merely a conduit. I want everybody to succeed. Uh, 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 do, you, do you see what we've got here? Um, query, if you sue your employer, are you likely to have another one? I don't think so. Now, uh, when we last left off, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about O plus A plus C equals contract. We want the parties to offer have an acceptance. Got to be some consideration in there to have a contract in place. Now, uh, 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 what's funny over there? Nothing. That bar exam's looming, people. We're worried about it here in Slumberland. Are you worried about it? We need everybody to be thinking about it, reading about it, doing the uh, doing your research, reading Farnsworth, outline. Now, um. Just to skip over a couple of things, we're not going to talk about the uh, uh, the statute of frauds. Uh, I know that's going to be a big part of the exam, but I just want everybody here, you're going to have to outline that on your own. Be a good student now. Okay, now, getting back to business. Um, where were we left off? Good morning, class. Good morning. Today we're going to talk about battery. Now who can tell me the elements of battery? <sighs> Good morning, Mr. Hanbury. Buenas noches. Nice of you to join us today. Mr. Hanbury, can you tell us the definition of battery? A harmful or offensive act that causes touching without consent or privilege. <sighs> Mr. Hanbury. Battery. Yes? No? Fence sitters? You're savage. Why are you fence sitting? Well. Battery. So, yes? Yes. Or no? Yes. Battery? Yes? No. No? No. Fence sitters? <laughs> Mr. Paul, what's your favorite pickup line? Um, I'd have to say, I'd eat gravy off of those knees. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, a baby runs in the middle of the street, gets hit by a car. Good lord. Car spins out, falls into a ditch, explodes. 
There's a fire set to a house. What's the proximate cause? Why is it always a baby? <laughs> All right. Yes, Miss Cash? So, like, if the baby was in the middle of the street and, like, the parents were in the house, like, is the grandmother responsible? Mr. Bellin. Okay. Well, if the baby was actually a child and an infant in the eyes of the court, would it necessarily have the rights that an adult would have? Okay, Mr. Philosophy. There we go. Sure, slack. Come on. Oh. <laughs> talking about what are the five elements of a contract. Um, where we were at on Tuesday was, we were talking about the case for American Energy Service where the employer asked for a contract and the person said that they were not going to do it because of what they needed to do. Now we're gonna go to the next case. Where, what about, Miss Seacrest, could you stand please? Now, I know you know this stuff, this is pretty easy. What is the five elements of a contract? Well, you have offer and acceptance and mutual intent. Is that right? And capable parties. And consideration. Okay, and damages. Do you know what we talked about on Monday about damages? That may be questionable, Judge. Not really sure. You do not know what the answer is questionable. <laughs> answer is questionable? Okay. So, what we talked about with damages was that when you have damages, you may recover for what you did not get in your restitution. So do you guys remember the case about the nose job? Where the lady, I mean nose job, the lady, um, she did not get the full recovery of what she wanted to do. And so when we're doing damages, we're gonna look at damages. And so you need this. This is for common law. UCC, the case would be, if I was selling you my car, and I gave you my car for $1,600, and subtract that from the value of the ignition, then you would only have $10,000. Mr. Roden, do you know um, of any reason why I don't get any other expenses allowed? Judge, is this a uh, common law or a UCC? Okay, so we do have a final coming up next week. And Miss Seacrest, once more, tell us just everything that you learned. Hello, Miss Togo, how are you this morning? All right. Glad you're on time at 8.45. Miss <laughs> Seacrest, where were we? What would you like to tell us, just anything about in general. Well, this semester we've learned about damages, we've learned about remedies, mutual mistake. You know what, Judge? We just want you to know how much we love you. That's what we've learned. We have learned that you're the best professor and we love you and you're the best teacher. All right, picking up where we left off last time, I want to talk about murder because Davis loves murder. What? Is murder. Ms. Chajon, what is murder? Now, say 
You got two people and one kills the other. Most jurisdictions say that's murder. But wait, you say, what if one person killed the other because they were roommates and they got mad at each other? Now, David's law said that's okay, but most jurisdictions don't agree. Now, we got this midterm coming up and uh, murder's gonna be on there because Davis loves murder. You need to know the elements of murder. Now, common law, murder's illegal. NBC, it's about the same, but there are differences you need to know. Anybody got any questions? Yes. Is the exam open book? It's open everything. You can bring your cousin Tim, maybe he can help you answer some questions. Now, let's discuss murder a little more. Now, we're gonna go over here. You got this person over here that says murder's illegal, right? So we're gonna come over here, and this person says only in certain instances. You get it? It's the same for common law and MPC, but it's different. You get it? Now, let's discuss felony murder. Mr. Rowe, what's felony murder? Uh, murder in the act of- I can't with you. I'll do it myself. Felony murder is when you commit a murder with another felony, a violent felony. All right, let's play some Jeopardy. All right, let's start with felony murder. Uh, Mr. Roden, what's felony murder? Well, you see, uh, Professor Davis, uh, felony murder is uh, the act of murder in the course of another felony, usually a violent felony. Question mark? You would be right. All right, let's move on to well, we already had that question, all right. Uh, let's move on to conspiracy. Ms. Cummins, what's conspiracy? Normally, it's like an agreement between multiple people, I think. All right, uh, yeah, it's, you're not really right. Ms. Bindal, all right, choose your, choose your poison. Um, I'll take conspiracy for 100. All right, let's answer this question. Our last topic today is rape. <laughs> Y'all, I'll have to keep from crying. <laughs> Okay guys, I know we've been talking about hearsay for like three and a half months, but we're finally gonna finish today. It's gonna be on the exam. You need to study for spring break every single day. All right, Ms. Segrist, what is hearsay? I think it's an oh, out of Mr. Woodall, I want you to answer, I'll look at you. Ms. Segrist? Uh, uh, okay. What is the balancing test for getting something in for evidence? Professor, I think it's where the, uh, the witness is prejudiced. No, 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 no. No one write that down. Okay. Mr. Park, tell me about the Owens case. to use your brain. Well, back when I was a prosecutor in D.C., we had this accountant, and him and his whole family went back into the witness protection program. But they still sent me Christmas cards for the last five years. Yes? What are they doing? Wait a minute, I, I, a death, death, What are they doing death. now? Oh, he might be dead. Good afternoon, everybody. Am I the last thing standing between you and this beautiful day? Have any of y'all seen Body Heat? Uh, no. Uh, no. It's an older movie. It's a soft core porn. Soft corn porn. <clears throat> soft core porn. That actually, it's kind of a steamy movie, but uh, it involves the rule of perpetuity. So uh, yeah, that's why. Do you guys want to see an actual picture of the beautiful bungalow from this case? Yeah. Okay, well, I brought a picture for you, so I'm going to pull it up. Uh, it doesn't seem to be open in here. The, the box in the bottom right. Yeah, the bottom right corner. The bottom right. That, yeah. No, that's yeah. the bottom right. The, yeah. right. the other right. The, the other right? The other right. Mm -hmm. Down. Is it? Yeah, just it's right over that way. Okay. Um, this? No, no, no. no, no, no. Down, to the right. Down. To the right. But other, other right. No, no. Um, this one? On the right? No, no. <laughs> um, Crystal, would you go show me? No, no, no. Not this one. 
I don't know. No, 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 no. Right here. Okay. Oh, I guess it's not going to work today, guys. I'm sorry. Maybe next time. So what's the difference between a sub lessee and an asinine? You know, most people think it's a signee, but it's not. It's, it's asinine. So I'm going to show you, okay? case the daddy's trying to give a gift to the son but see the daddy he didn't he didn't deliver it properly so he didn't give the gift the daddy couldn't give the gift did he just say daddy I think he said it like eight times <laughs> now I have a friend and he wrote a book about Bermuda now it doesn't have any six drugs of rock and roll in it but it's still a good book so okay everybody you have to remember tacking doesn't go forward it only goes backwards, and I'm gonna make a big scene about it so you don't forget, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I love seeing the procedure. I love it. Okay, class. Okay, it's time to begin. So, procedure. And before I recap every bit of yesterday's lecture, we are going to have to reschedule a class. You see, I have a very important meeting about a very important meeting during this lecture next week. So fortunately, I've provided three options that you can choose from. Monday, 5.45 a.m. I'm an early riser, you should be too. Friday, 4.30 p.m. I see that look, Miss Gnomes. Work, the work doesn't end just because it's Friday or Tuesday at 11.30. Now, I'm the dean of the law school. I know you're scheduling. Tuesday is a really good time. So who wants to come on Tuesday? Everybody. Great. Well, we've taken care of that. What they don't know is I've already updated my schedule for Tuesday at 11.30. Law students are so predictable. Now, Miss Kastner. Can you tell us everything you know about supplemental jurisdiction? It would be a way to get a claim to federal court. Well, so, Ms. Kastner, supplemental jurisdiction involves the common nucleus of operative fact. And when you have two claims circling the common nucleus, you can take those two claims and supplement them into federal court. Whereas removal jurisdiction, the claims in federal court, you need to shoot it back in the state court. So, with Penoyer v. Neff, what you need to remember is that it's not good law anymore, and you really don't need to remember Penoyer v. Neff. Now, International Shoe, it's all about those minimum contacts, you see. You've got to have enough minimum contact. Mr. Friedman, can you tell us about the disagreement between Justice O'Connor and Justice Brennan and the, the, the establishment of personal jurisdiction? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, neither is the court, so that's great. Um, when you're establishing the power of a court over a defendant, it is absolutely essential so that that defendant's not in court thinking, you don't have jurisdiction over me. Yes, Mr. Saldo. Uh, is this going to be on the exam? Well, for the exam, I would say you need to learn federal rules of civil procedure and all the cases in the book. And we will not be doing an open book exam this year. I know that you've heard that some past years have done open book exams, but we're not doing them this year. 
So to answer your question, I'd say read everything, know everything, especially the rule numbers, very important. And any other questions besides Mr. Rudin? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Rudin. Mr. Dean, sir, uh, would it be okay if, uh, if how important is personal jurisdiction? It gets a little murky. Well, it is murky, Mr. Rudin. We unfortunately don't have a lot of bright lines in personal jurisdiction. I'd say that it is extremely important and will be well represented on the exam, perhaps with a long essay question, perhaps about an out-of-state defendant asserting specific personal jurisdiction, but not to tell you exactly what's going to be on the exam. Any other questions? Mr. Woodall? I don't have any right now. Well, Mr. Woodall, we'll be starting with you next week when we discuss the uh, key components of removal jurisdiction. And then we'll be calling on Ms. Bendall, second, and Mr. Hoggle, third, in that order. So the rest of you, you can read if you want. If not, fine. Something funny, Mr. Stubble? No, I'm just glad to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, that concludes our lecture on supplemental jurisdiction. Now, 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 now the, the reading assignment is going to be 17 and, and 19. We're going we're to skip 20 in the second half of 17. Just do 19. Okay. okay. Good morning, class. My name is Edward C. Martin, and this is Torts 1. Okay. Uh, I know for uh, class we had you read uh, pages 1 through 590, and I hope you're prepared. But first off, uh, you can find me here. I wrote this book, and I wrote this book. Uh, these books are right. Your, your all law outlines are wrong, okay? They're just wrong. I give wrong information, and people don't correct me, so I just let it go. Let it go. Uh, but, yes, this one's right. This one is actually kind of wrong. Other people had to write this book, so, you know, they're not me. Um, now, students, if you went to any other law school in the country, uh, or if you read my book, um, you would be wrong, okay? Because everywhere else, there's three types of intent, okay? Actual, transferred, implied, but that's wrong. There's actually 13 types of intent. There's specific, simple, volitional, semi-volitional, impliedly transferred, transferred, actual, intentionally intentional, simply specific, negligently actual, and recklessly transferred. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, class, uh, we will be discussing Brown v. Kemp. Um, now, the issue here is uh, they're, they're hitting with a stick and hitting a dog. Does anybody know how long a rod is? They say it's a rod away. Yes, how long is a rod? Uh, 16 and a half feet. Well, what kind of dog was it? Uh, what, you don't know what kind of dog it was? You got to know these things. Do you think you're going to represent the client? You're not going to know what kind of dog it is? Yes, Mr. Roden. Why does it matter what dog it was? It, it might be it, it's a material fact. It's a fact of the case. Nobody knows what kind of dog it was. You think just because it's not in this book that it's not important? Okay? I know I know because I care about torts, okay? I, I talked to Kendall's, I talked to Kendall's granddaughter. I got some pictures. It's in fact a Labrador retriever, okay? Okay? You gotta know these things. Don't come to my class unprepared. Okay? Thank you. Alright. Alright, um, so class, um, who determines duty? The courts. Who determines duty? The courts. I said who determines duty? Come on, it's the court. The court determines duty. I mean, all semester we've been going over this, okay? The court determines duty. Now, now you got you to know these things, okay? Um, okay, guys, what we're talking about today is, is whether or not you can... Okay, class, uh, number one rule is uh, don't be late. Uh, number two, um, once you come in, 
You can't leave. It's like the Hotel California. You can check in anytime you want, but you can't check out. All right. Well, today, let's turn to, uh, let's see, we are at Sindel the Abbott Laboratories. Okay. Uh, anybody have the, um, have the, uh, facts? Okay. You know, 75 years old. And I show up on time for things, okay? It's hard for me to get going in the morning. But I'm here, okay? Part of the law. Be on time. Okay? All right. Okay, in Paul's graph, you may have read uh, the decision, okay? And you may think, this is in the case book, this is uh, law, but it, that would in fact be wrong if you... Class, I, I've told you that once you leave the class, you are not allowed to come back and this has been expressly stated. I don't know class how much I have to explain to you that, that maintaining a quiet classroom is the key to, in fact, getting a good legal education, okay? So now that now that we can learn towards <laughs> Okay, class, so in Wagon Mound, we, we talked about foreseeable risk, and we're gonna talk about risks that are foreseeable, okay? Um, I don't know if any of your parents ever let you bungee jump, that is negligence, okay? That's big end negligence, like, that's it, okay? But I, my kids, they do not, they do not bungee jump. They did not go to amusement parks. They do not go over 40 miles an hour on Lake Shore, okay? Because guess what? I'm not negligent, okay? Okay? All right, so, so uh, let's assume Mr. Hoggle was driving negligently down Lake Shore, which I, Suspect he did. So let's assume uh, Mr. Hoggle was uh, assaulting uh, Mr. Stubbley here, which, you know, he, he might have done. Uh, let's assume uh, Mr. Hoggle uh, falsely imprisoned Mr. Roden. Uh, he might have done. Um, all right, okay, class. Uh, well, is this battery? No? All right. Is this battery? No? Is this battery? No? Is this battery? Is that battery? No one thinks that's battery. Huh? Yes. I don't go there.